So recently sent a video link to a um, little special ecumenical meeting that James White had with a Muslim uh, scholar or whatever else. And I'm going to show a little bit of this thing. And uh, just, but you know, if you've seen the other video that I did showing the university, the Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., and then one in Qatar, and how that high level, the higher levels of, of Islam and Catholicism are working together. Um, that's why I believe, one of many reasons why I believe that James White is a Jesuit. Um, he's, you know, these guys, they're, they're classic at playing good cop, bad cop. It's like professional wrestling, Hulk Hogan versus, you know, Andre the Giant or something, you know, whatever. That goes way back, I realize. But, you know, you understand my point. But I'm going to show you a little bit of this video and just kind of discuss just the introduction to this thing. I'm not going to waste your time with watching the whole thing. It's just a lot of stupid nonsense, okay? But uh, let's just watch a little bit of this thing. And, you know, if you're still following James White after this whole thing, I mean, you got problems. You need to get saved. Let's watch a little bit of this. I have been looking forward to this evening for a very, very long time. It has been my desire to engage in a dialogue like this. and. When the opportunity came that I'd be coming into this area, uh, I contacted Dr. Cotty and I, I put out the call. Uh, and the church here was, uh, was so kind to respond and to uh, join with us in providing a place for us to have our conversation this evening. I want you to understand uh, what our motivations are this evening in, in coming together. This is not a debate. Some of you have seen uh, debates that I have done around the world. Uh, this is not intended to be a debate. Uh, we are going to, of necessity, discuss differences that we have. Um, the thing that makes this wonderful, and the reason that I sought out Dr. Cotty, aside from the fact that I have learned so much from him uh, over the years, uh, that he's been a primary influence in my study of Islam. I am a student of Islam, and I have learned much from him. But the reason I specifically sought him out is because I sense in him such a kindred spirit on the other side of the chasm that divides us in regards to our theology and our beliefs. I, I sought a kindred spirit, you know. Um, where is any of this language out in the Bible? I mean, you know, Elijah, the priest of Baal, and, you know, he comes and he says, you know, I'm here today, you know, we're going to have a dialogue, and I sense in these priests of Baal a kindred spirit, you know, we, we, we all just were, we need to come together and, 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 and talk out our differences. <laughs> He's going to hell. They're both going to hell in reality, but you know, the guy, this Muslim's going to hell. I seek no compromises with Islam. Islam is a satanic cult. Well, sit down and dialogue. No, sit down and tell them that they're going to hell from the Bible. And I know that there are Muslims that watch this channel. You're going to hell. You understand that? You reject Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is just some kind of a stupid prophet to you, okay? He's God manifest in the flesh. He died on the cross. His blood was shed for your sins as the only payment for your sins. And if you reject Him as your Lord and Savior, you're going to go to hell and burn forever. Jesus is the only way to heaven. All right? Not some pervert named Muhammad that, you know, lived at some time in the past and tried to make things up, you know, whatever else. Angels with 600 wings telling him, you know, all this stupid nonsense that is the Koran. It's a creation of Islam, or Islam is a creation of Roman Catholicism too, by the way. Whatever. Why is James White acting like this? Because he's a Jesuit. Guarantee it. Let's continue here. He is a consistent Muslim. He believes what he says. He wants to seek for consistency amongst his people and his own practice. And so when you have two believing people, one Christian, one Muslim, come together and say, we need to discuss not only what divides us, but also where do we have similarities? How can we live in the same community? And the most important thing is this. If we do what, we, if we do what I hope happens this evening, we're going to do something absolutely unique. It hardly ever happens. And that is two communities where unfortunately there is a lot of fear on both sides. There is a lot of misunderstanding on both sides. And as a Christian, 
I want to see doors opened. As a Christian, I want you, as if you are a Christian here this evening, to not have fear of the Muslim people, but to have love for the Muslim people. I want the Muslim people to understand that we care and that we want to have dialogue and that we're not seeking this evening to sweep our differences under the rug and say they don't matter. Dr. Qadi cannot present an Islam that is just simply one view amongst many. I believe in divine revelation. He believes in divine revelation. So how do we get along? How do our communities talk to one another? The sad fact of the matter is that conversation isn't happening. And I want it to start tonight. And I want it to start here. I want it to start tonight. We need to have our communities get along. Okay, let me tell you how Islam and true Bible-believing Christianity gets along. Muslims need to stay in their own country, the bounds of their habitation. All right? I'm not going to send in troops to go over to some other country or there some Islamic country, predominantly Islamic country, to go in there and forcibly convert those people. All right? You want to get along, stay in your own country. That's the whole truth here. All right. And if a Christian gets saved and they want to go in there and witness to those people and they realize the cost and everything else, probably going to get martyred, go ahead. Go on in there. But we should not be sending military troops to go and force and coerce and things. And Islam coming to this country is an invasion All right, here in America. Integration, this whole uh, system, it's all part of the end times uh, system of Roman Catholicism. The Antichrist comes, he goes forth conquering and to conquer. Who's he going after? It's a Roman Catholic crusade. They're going to go after Muslims, the low-level ones. The high-level ones are working in collusion with the Jesuits. Proven, proven. They have a, a university, Georgetown University in Qatar, training Muslim students. And again, you know, if I was a Roman Catholic, I'd find that to be quite offensive. Why are Catholics going into Muslim countries and dialoguing and training them to do things. Why? I mean, doesn't Catholicism teach to the lower down people that are too dumb to realize what's going on up at the top? They teach that Peter is the first pope. And yet Peter said in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Read the verse. Oh, we need uh, Christians, you know, we need to have Christians come together with with Muslims and stuff like this. Let's see what uh, James White said over here with uh, a Jesuit, an actual Jesuit priest that he uh, <coughs> debated. <laughs> yeah, a again, people, people don't understand this. I mean, James White's followers are some of the most ignorant people out there. He preys on their ignorance. That's the whole point. He'll make fun of King James onlyism, Bible-believing Christians. Christians just say, I believe this is God's book. And that's funny. That's a joke. And you, oh, you're so ignorant. So, I'm ignorant because I believe the book that I preach out of? That's kind of weird. But uh, he preys on the ignorance of his people. And they'll say, you know, well, how could James White be a Jesuit when he himself comes out and debates, you know, Jesuit and Catholic priests and things like this? He's against Catholicism. Um, look at the solutions that he comes up with. He's not saying anything. It's all just intellectual discussions. You're never going to hear James White come out and condemn the Jesuits as a satanic organization. He'll never do it. Never do it. I'll show you one of the reasons why. But listen to what he says about this Jesuit that he's, pre that he's uh, debating with. I welcome you all here this evening. I am very thankful that you have taken the time to come out, uh, even when we have important topics taking place in our nation to consider what in reality is a far more important topic for while the situation in our land will pass the topic that we are addressing has eternal ramifications in regards to the gospel itself what is the gospel the scriptures tell us that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation and while we will be discussing sola scriptura and the belief that the scriptures are the sole infallible rule of faith of the church this evening, I want you to understand from the beginning that the reason that I discuss this or really any other issue in the debates that we have done over the years is because each one of these debates goes back to the issue of the gospel itself. 
I believe that without a sure word from God, we cannot proclaim the gospel with power. I believe that without a sure word from God, we cannot proclaim the gospel with power. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Jimmy, hold it up. Hold it up. Show us what is the sure word of God that doesn't need to be changed. Hold it up. Go ahead. Well, the King James only... I asked you to provide what is the sure word of God that doesn't need to be changed. Hold it up for all the people to see. He doesn't believe it. The gospel is based upon God's revelation to us in Scripture. And if that word is uncertain, if God's revelation to us is uncertain, then there is no basis upon which we can proclaim the gospel with certainty. <laughs> you got to love these little educated idiots, you know, these little scholars. Jesus couldn't stand them either back in his day. You know, there is no way that we can proclaim the gospel with certainty. Wow, you know, let's homiletics here. Ooh, yay, good speech, good speech. Oh, perfectly enunciated. I was so, I was moved to want to vomit, you know. I mean, <laughs> give me a break. I mean, if we don't know the scriptures and if it's if it's changed, then we cannot tell it. Total stinking liar. Doesn't believe that, what he's saying for one second. He has no Bible that he considers to be perfect. And he makes fun of those who do. You know, he don't believe the New American Standard Version shouldn't be changed. Change it as soon as you need to update it. All the, the language is changing, certain nuances and things. Change it again. How about the Nestle's text? The Nestle's text, you got the 27th over here, and you got the 28th. Right there. Boom, boom. Is the 28th definitive? Is it done? Are there any more needs to update it? Of course, of course. It's always changing. It's always in flux. It's always needing to be... Mm -hmm. But in the debate, the pretty little debate with a nice little speech, he comes out and he says, the word of God is unchanging. And, and uh... <laughs> Some of you people have fall for this stuff. I mean, good night. Get saved, okay? Holy Spirit will give you discernment then. Let's continue. It is my conviction that the claims and assertions of the Roman Catholic Church in regard to her own authority have resulted not in a clarification of the gospel, but instead in a diminishment and sadly in the official teachings of the church, I believe a substitution for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is why we must address this issue. Because I am convinced that without sola scriptura, there is no unchanging gospel that is the same in every age and every nation. <laughs> I mean, this guy sounds like Mike Pence, doesn't he? You know, Mike Pence, another Catholic. You know, I'm convinced that there will be no unchanging standard for every nation and every generation. <laughs> but, you know, again, think about what he's saying here. The gospel's the same. It's unchanged. And this guy's a deep student of Scripture. Um, you ever hear dispensational teaching there? Uh, no, it's not unchanged. Right? The gospel has changed many times. Uh, what were people preaching before Jesus Christ came and died on, on the cross? You know, it's, the gospel's always been the same. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's continue. Watch a little bit more. But because God has given us His Word, because it is God-breathed, it has His authority, then we can know that the gospel proclaimed by the apostles and the gospel that has been true in every generation remains true in our generation and for our children and our children's children. <laughs> I mean, again, if for our children and our children's children. <laughs> Oh boy, so funny. The gospel's just unchanged. It's the same one. It's there. They were preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in Genesis chapter 1. Yeah, buddy. You know, and you got to have sola scriptura. That's very important. The Bible alone, the Bible and the scriptures alone. <laughs> Even though we don't believe in a sole Bible as a final authority. Yeah, continuing. 
That is the reason that we gather here this evening. Now, I am very much looking forward to this particular encounter. Father Paco and I have debated three times before, uh, twice here in the San Diego area on justification and the Mass, and uh, about two or three years ago now on Long Island on the subject of the papacy. Many of you have heard me say, any of you have heard me speak in other places, have heard me say that of all the individuals that I have debated, I have the most respect for Mitchell Paqua. The debate this evening, if it goes as our previous three debates have gone, will not be about James White and Mitchell Paqua. It won't be about the fact that I can wear colorful ties and he cannot. It won't be about anything personal concerning he or I, because one of the things that I enjoy about Father Pacwa is that he sticks to the subject. And in point of fact, I would say, though this is my fifth or sixth debate on this subject, it may well be the first time I've been able to debate the subject, and it solely stay on the subject of sola scriptura. And so my desire in engaging in these debates is to serve you, not myself, not anyone else, the person listening. If we present our case clearly, and you can leave this place understanding what the differences are and the basics of our positions and how they interact, then we will have done what we need to do here this evening. Thank you for being here. God bless. Thank you for being here to the Catholics, and God bless. Um, and, you know, I have more respect for Mitchell Pacwa. He's a Jesuit. I mean, Scripture, please, show me some Scripture where any Christian or anybody, anybody in the entire Bible says about somebody who's a, a direct enemy of Jesus Christ. I have more respect for them. I mean, back to Elijah versus the prophets of Baal. I have a lot of respect for you guys, and, you know, and I'm just sorry that I'm about to cut your heads off now. You know, the priests of Baal. He's up there, 400 of them, just whacking their heads off and think, you know, the Apostle Paul. Well, I, I'm, I'm here and the Jews hate my guts and everything, but I'm not going to preach in ways that would offend them or Stephen getting stoned to death, you know, and things, Acts chapter 7. But they, they were, it was all just dialogue and ecumenical. He's fake. He's a fraud. And if you're still listening to him, uh, you need to get saved. I'm going to tell you that right now. I understand he, this kind of guy... He's very highly trained. He comes up with lots of little questions, just like a good devil does. And he'll come out with all these little things and put these little questions in your mind. I'll show you some scripture on that real quick. And he just gets you so confused. And you go, well, I thought the King James Bible is God's word, but uh, I'm not so sure now. I, uh, uh. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 through 5. Perfect description of James White. There is no scripture saying that we should be dialoguing with lost sinners. Nothing. Let's live together in harmony. You can't. You mean to tell me, I mean, just think about that. You can live together in harmony with people that are going to hell? Are you kidding me? And the Jesuits? The Jesuits who are sworn to destroy anybody who stands against Rome? To infiltrate? To murder them? Inciters of wars? Inciters of assassinations? It's just disgusting. Let me read another little thing here for you. Uh, my church is entering the new millennium with a three-year focus on the Blessed Trinity. Dr. White highlights a vital truth. The mystery of the Trinity is true related, true, truly related to how we love God. Isn't that nice? Our faith in the Trinity is the same. One God, three co-equal persons. And he, you know, he calls him Father Pacwa. When Jesus says, call no man on earth your father. Speaking of religious titles. 
Doesn't have a problem with that. But FR standing for father, Mitchell Pacwa, assistant professor, University of Dallas, right there. You see it? On the back of uh, James White's book. Oh, and uh, up there throwing the other one, Norman Geisler, another trained Jesuit. And I came out with a video saying, you know, why is his book endorsed by a Jesuit? No. Oh, he made a little rebuttal video and stuff. Oh, it's so funny. Look at the dumb King James only had to... Yeah, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. And you're not, White. You are a servant. You are a whore for the Vatican, is what you are. And your little debates haven't convinced any of us that are Bible believers. And now you see the little Jesuit agenda continues with, oh, well, you know, let's, let's have debate and... and, and, and you know, dialogue, and let's work at reconciling differences between Christians and Muslims. You better not follow James White, because he's going to take you to hell with him.